to the advent of the white man, Nigerian settlements were not urbanized to any large extent. That is to say that the type of urbanization that took place at the period was internal, particularly in Yoruba towns and cities. Vestiges of ancient civilization in this part of West Africa did not endure except in such cities like Kano, Benin and Ife, among a few which are the repository of our ancient culture and art. With the advent of the colonial era, a cautious form of planned settlement evolved. This resulted in the development of a low-density area called GRA, otherwise known as the European Quarters, whereas the other part of the town or city, known as the African Quarters, were not provided with the same distinguishing characteristics. Since independence, there has been very rapid growth in the size and population of towns and cities in Nigeria associated with economic growth. The discovery of oil has accentuated this growth. The rapid urbanization which resulted in the physical expansion of our towns and cities encouraged a large influx of people. The reasons accounting for the rural urban migration are known. The urban facilities like schools, hospitals and various other amenities which are lacking in the rural areas constitute a main incentive. The urban wages as well as socio-economic opportunities are also contributive factors that help to sustain the inflow of population into the urban centers. Very few Nigerians want to work in rural areas. In some areas where many Nigerians prefer working in rural areas, the hardship of getting the necessary infrastructure can be frustrating, argued Mr. T. A. Babatunde, the headmaster of the Methodist Primary School, Olori Shaoko, a village of about five kilometers from Manea. We are not living there because there's no any amenity, no house to live, no good water, and not, nothing whatsoever, no light. Other areas like Idiodo, Akirinlo, Molariri, Oduaba, Akonko, Elebu, Akuo, Aregbe, and Ajibade, which are within 35 km range to Ibadan, do not have dispensaries, not to talk of clinics. Lamented Mr. Ewa Konde, the principal of a community high school which is located between Alabata and Ajibade villages. With a staff strength of 16, mostly male teachers, only five of them reside in these villages. Most of the teachers travel daily to the community high school from either Mania or Ibadan. Mr. Akonde said that this is due to the standard of living in these villages. Even some members of the National Youth Service Corps sometimes ignore the part of the objectives of the scheme, which makes it mandatory for a youth corps members to be able to render their selfless services in any part of the country, including serving in rural areas. A sample of opinion conducted by TSOS News last year at the orientation camp in Ibadan revealed that our youths don't buy the idea of working in rural areas. I'm Cordelia Osadevi. I wish to be in all these urban areas, but if they throw me to any of the rural areas, I will object. It should be noted that it is not our youths alone who prefer to work in urban centers. Majority of the Nigerians, including the professionals, just don't like working in rural areas. The rural urban migration have left many parts of rural areas undeveloped. Mrs. Aro Esson, the Oyo Chief Inspector of the NYSC, spoke more on this. Rural aid is like punishment living in the rural areas. And you have to have a sense of purpose to agree to be there. You have to know why you are doing it and the gains from doing it. And therefore, the people that will voluntarily do it will be few as of now. That is why I have nothing against the professionals that are drifting from the rural area to the townships as of now. On the part of our government, efforts are being made to tackle the problems of infrastructure which makes many parts of rural areas unattractive to the nation's manpower. Schemes like rural electrification and pipe bond water have been pursued, but statistics have shown that only a few areas have benefited from such government programs. One medical practitioner, Dr. Bumiola Torego, was of the opinion that unless our government give incentive to professionals, it will be impossible to redirect the nation's manpower into rural areas. The government is not, uh, in fact, making any efforts to attract people to the rural area. And uh, in fact, that is very true in uh, practically every field. If, for instance, government says, uh, I will establish some uh, private hospitals for doctors in a rural area, that uh, you have tax incentive, that uh, 
I will supply you drugs at a certain rates, and I'm sure most doctors will take the opportunity and move to the rural area. But you find that uh, there are not such uh, incentives. Mrs. Arrowson also had a suggestion to offer. There has to be a compulsion about it. Maybe government policy like the one we have in NYC that will make people go there. Or some ideology or some conviction arising from maybe reorientation or some political or social happening in this country whereby we all now accept that we have uh, we have a task and that this task is to remain in the rural areas and develop it. The issue that is confronting this country in terms of manpower drift is difficult but is up to change provided our youths Professionals and government sit down to work out a well-defined formula of solving our urban population explosion and rural depopulation with a view to making rural development in Nigeria a reality. With Dejiade Sawyer behind the camera, Dr. Wani TSOS News.